Hello everyone, my name is Michael McCann and welcome to this Wayward Art Company tutorial on creating an old house in Blender. And this will be part one of two. In the first one we'll be working on modeling the house. And in the second one I'll be spending a lot more time than I have in the past on the, the texturing process of, of creating these models. So it, uh, it sort of needs its own video for that. But um, so both halves will be fairly long. I imagine they'll they'll both push, you know, maybe close to an hour. Uh, so we'll just get started, and I'll do my best to be as as efficient as I can. And I've actually um, created a reference image to help with the modeling. So in order to find that, you can just go to my YouTube channel, and then click on the little Facebook link. And I've posted the reference image here, which looks a little bit like, you know, a crazy smiley face, but it's actually a really useful reference image. And I usually leave a Dropbox link, but that's because most people don't know that you can just click on the photo, then click options and download it. So you can download it there, and then we can get started. For this, I'll be using version 2.76. And to start, I'll just delete my default cube and then go into top orthographic view and press N to bring up my options here on the right and check background image and then add image and open. And then I'll find that reference image that I just downloaded. And I can adjust the opacity to make it a little more easy to see. And it's very important that in user preferences and then add-ons, you have add mesh extra objects selected. That way when I type shift A, I have all of these extra mesh objects, but what I want to choose is single vertex. Now I'll take that vertex and position it here at the very top of this reference line in the red dot and then just extrude it with E and connect it to all of the other red dots. And once that's finished, I'll select everything with A and then rotate it on X 90 degrees so that it's standing straight up. And I'm going to get rid of these relationship lines and uh, grid floor because it's distracting. Now from top orthographic view again, I'm going to rotate it on Z negative 45 degrees and then place it in the corner of the reference object. There is a vertex right in the middle of this line, so I'm going to be positioning that right over the corner. Then I'll duplicate it with Shift D and rotate it on Z negative 90 degrees and position that vertex again over the corner. And then I'll select them both with A and type W and bridge edge loops. Then I can just select this edge and extrude it on Y and extrude this one on X always uh, keeping in mind to line that vertex up with the corner. And the next corner points the other way, so I need to duplicate it with Shift-D and then rotate it on Z negative 90 degrees. And then I can bridge these edge loops. And then extrude this back on X, this up on Y. And then duplicate it, rotate it on Z negative 90 degrees and then use W and bridge edge loops to fill in these last two gaps. And that's the majority of the roof completed, but the, the reason those faces are so dark is because the normals are facing the wrong way, so you just need to recalculate them. Now I can select this top edge on the roof and hit F to face it, and then I to inset, and then E to extrude that down. 
And now I want to separate this face from the rest of the roof, so I'm going to hit P and choose Separate by Selection. And then I can just select the roof and hit H to hide it. And so right now this is just an end gun, so I want to clean up the topology a little bit, so I can just select these two vertices and press J to join them. And then I can press K, which is the hotkey for the knife tool. And the way the knife works, if you just hover over a vertex or an edge, it will be highlighted. And you need to left click on the mouse to uh, select that point. And then you just drag it to another vertex or another edge. And once that's highlighted, you, you left click again, and then you press enter to finalize the cut. So it's a really useful tool in adding more geometry to your mesh without uh, you know getting it too messy or you know having to subdivide it which creates you know may maybe more geometry than you want all right so now I can press alt H which unhides that roof now I'm going to do the same to the bottom I want to add a face to this so I'll just select this uh, last edge and I'll press F to face and then go into top orthographic view because I'm going to inset again as well but I want to use this reference image as a guideline for how far to inset. Now with this face still selected I can hit extrude and hold control and snap this down five blender units. And now I can just delete that face and then select these two vertices and extrude them out on Y. And I want to select this little uh, tab down here. It says automatically merge vertices moved to the same location. So now from top orthographic view, I can just grab this on Y and connect it to the vertex there in the front. And now that's all connected. And I can do the same thing for these three on the side, and this will help begin the porch. And I'm getting in real close so that I can like accurately line this up so that it connects straight. Okay, uh, so with them still selected, I'm going to extrude it out even further because in the reference image, you can see that I have this little gray area uh, outlined to where the porch should come out to. And I can select this bottom edge loop and extrude it on Z while holding control so that it snaps one blender unit. Then I can select the top five faces of the porch and press shift to D to duplicate it and move it up. Not quite in the center, a little lower. So about there. And then I can extrude it up and then hit E to extrude again and right mouse click to cancel that and then just scale it out and extrude it up one more time. That gives the top of the porch a little more detail. Now I want to go back to the reference image and concentrate on this square. I'm just going to put the cursor in the middle and type shift A and add a cube and then scale it in edit mode. Now move it up a bit and I also want to make sure that these uh, edges line up. I can delete the bottom face and I want to select the top face and type shift S and choose cursor to selected. Now I'll type Shift A and add a single vertex. And make sure that you're in vertex select or else you won't be able to move it when you, when you grab it. Um, but I'm going to take it to that second line and I'm going to do the same thing. Just use E to extrude and connect all of the little red dots. Then select the whole thing with A and rotate it on X 90 degrees and then rotate it on Z negative 45 degrees. And this time there isn't a vertex in the center or anywhere that I can uh, you know, use as a reference to line it up. So I've already included this little 
black line that um, your edge should fit right into. So just line it up. And type Shift D. And then move it on X. And rotate it on Z, negative 90 degrees. And then line this one up with the corner. And then select everything and press W and bridge edge loops. And because we added the cursor there in the center, we can change our pivot point to 3D cursor and type Shift D and rotate on Z 180 degrees. So now we can just select these two edges and press W bridge edge loops and then do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so now if I hover over this and press L, it selects the whole, the whole piece. And I can just move it up so that it sits at the top of that cube. You'll have to recalculate those normals as well because they'll likely be facing the wrong way. So I can just select this edge now and press F to face and then I to inset in and then just delete that face. Now I want to start working on some of the detail for the porch. So I'll go into front orthographic view and use the reference image and I'll start working on this large pillar. So I'll just add my 3D cursor and then add a cube and then just scale and extrude so that it fits around the shape of the reference image. I'm also deleting the top and the bottom faces uh, as they won't be seen anyway. So now in face select I can select these four faces and hit press I to inset. And over here in my inset uh, toolbar I can choose individual and then use this thickness value to adjust the size. Now I'll press E to extrude and then cancel that with the right mouse click and then Alt S to scale along the normals and then I can change my pivot point to individual origins and scale them in again. And that gives the pillar a little bit of extra detail. It isn't very necessary but uh, I think it looks good. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of these uh, and we're going to use the array modifier. So I'm going to first unwrap this one because if I unwrap this one I won't have to unwrap all of the others later. So I'm just selecting the edges and hitting Control E and then choosing Mark Seam. And I'm just kind of doing this by experience. I know what areas uh, look I, I can sort of tell by the shape of some geometry what it's going to look like when it unwraps. Um, but really it just comes with experience of having done it a lot. You know, you want you want most of your mesh to stay all together in one piece. But, um, but that can't always happen. So you'll sometimes have to separate your, uh, your mesh into a bunch of different UVs so that you can organize it in a really straight and efficient way in the texture space. Now I'm just unwrapping each piece individually to see what it looks like. And uh, if, you know, so if I don't like it, I can just you know make some corrections. But I'll definitely go over a lot more of the UV unwrapping in the final part of this, which will be you know texturing. Um, I'll go in, into this process in much more detail. So now that I have everything unwrapped the way that I want, I'm going to just scale everything down and make some sense out of it, like visually, so that um, I know what every piece is. So the uh, I'm sort of laying this out exactly how it is on the mesh. So the top part and then, then the part underneath of that, and then I can scale these uh, four pieces down and put them inside to utilize that texture space.
And then this is the final bottom piece, that long piece, but I can rotate it and then stick it underneath. And now it looks really organized, so that will help a lot later when we do the texturing process. Now I've pressed P to pin that down, and that way if I accidentally unwrap it again, it won't you know, undo what I've already done. Now in edit mode, I'm going to move this up so that the pivot point is at the bottom. And now in object mode, I can scale this from the bottom, which makes it really easy to position it in place on the porch. So I'll just move this to the edge in front view and scale it down. So once it meets the top and the bottom of the porch, I want to make sure that it's in a good position from front and side view. And I can add my array modifier. But I want to change the relative offset from x to y, or negative y. So negative 1. And then change the count to 4. And then adjust the relative offset until they fit evenly in that space. And then once you have it, you can just apply that array modifier. And then it's just a matter of duplicating some of these pillars and moving them around, trying to keep them fairly evenly spaced. But, um, but it's your house and your porch. You can put them wherever you like. So once you've positioned them, um, we can start working on the smaller uh, little pillars that make up the railing. So I'll just add my cursor and type Shift A and add a cube and do the same thing, just scale and extrude so that it fits around the, the reference image. And you could use a cylinder for this if you wanted it to look more round, but I'm going to just use a cube. This is just really basic stuff, just extruding with E and then scaling with S. And then of course delete the top and bottom face because you know they don't need to be there. And I can select this edge and hit Control E and mark the seam. Because I want to unwrap this as well, so I'm going to choose this square face and unwrap and then choose Follow Active Quads with everything else selected. And that unwraps it really neatly. And some of these faces that aren't completely square, there will be a little bit of UV stretching. But the object itself is so small I don't really think it will matter. I think what's more important, because there will be so many of these in the texture space, it's more important to have a nice neat UV that you can, uh, you know, position in the texture space really in a really organized fashion. Now I'm just scaling this down and I'm just approximating how large it should be. I think, yeah, like that looks pretty good. And now I'll add an array modifier again. And this time it's already set to the right relative uh, offset. It's on X. So I can just um, space them apart and then change the count to something that fits in evenly. And then just, uh, it's the same process, apply the array modifier and then just use Shift D to duplicate these and put them between all of the larger pillars. So once that's done, we can add one last cube and this will be the top of the railing. I'm going to delete the front and back faces. and then scale this down and then uh, scale it on Z to sort of flatten it out a little and on Y as well and I want this to be I want to scale it in a little on X so that it fits within the larger pillars I don't want it to extend you know outside of them so just make this long enough so that it, it reaches each side of the, the porch. 
and position it down. Then I'm going to extrude the top face and scale it on X to round out the top a little bit so that it isn't so boxy and square. And then duplicate the whole thing, rotate it on Z 90 degrees. And when I extruded that up, it created these little faces on the side. I'm just going to delete those. And then just position it so that it's even in the front. And shorten the length, of course. And that would have also left those uh, faces from that extrusion here. I'm going to get rid of those. And then I can just duplicate this front one and move it to the back. And shorten it, and our port should be finished. Now I can start working on the stairs. So I can add a vertex here and extrude up on Z and then back on Y. And I only need to do it once because I can add an array modifier. Then change the relative offset on the X axis to zero. And then on Y and Z change them to one. And check the box that says merge so that those uh, vertices are connected. And then I can just change the count. I'll take mine up to 8 for now, but then uh, once I have it in place, I can uh, adjust the, the count and the scaling. Right now I'm using my box select tool, just uh, B is the hotkey and I'm just using it as a ruler to uh, make sure that that everything is level. So now I can extrude this edge out and the normals are backwards so you need to recalculate them. And that looks good so I can just apply that modifier. Okay, now I want to uh, select everything and type Shift S, cursor to select it, and then add a cube. I'm just going to scale it so it's really thin on X and position it so that it's pretty much level with the bottom of the stairs. And then move it down. And I'm just going to add one loop cut in the middle and bring it back to that, that last step. And then grab these vertices and move them down. So that pretty much that edge is aligned with the, the uh, corner of each step. So I can move this out to the end. And then duplicate it and move it to the other end. And that fills in that little gap. Okay, so that's done. I think now it's time that I can start working on the windows and the, uh, the door. So I'm going to select all of the walls and press P and choose separate by selection and then add the little cube there for the attic uh, by selecting both of them and pressing Control J to join them. And I've separated the walls because I'll be adding a lot of loop cuts and every time they'll pass through these edges on the roof they would add another vertex. So, you know, to keep the geometry down, it's better to separate it. But I'm going to add one loop cut there up the front, another one on the side. And I'll put another one right in the middle on the, uh, on the right side view. But I'll try and uh, move it back because I'll only want windows on the, uh, the back uh, end of this. So put another one in the middle there and then one in the middle. I'm going to try to keep most of the windows the same size, um, but some of them will probably be, you know, a little smaller or, um, you know, depending on where they are. But all of these will be the same size, so I'll select these and I'll press I to inset. And then go back to my tools and select individual. And I can adjust the thickness to make them a little larger or smaller. In this case, I want them to be smaller because these windows are going to have 
uh, shutters. So, you know, they, they need to have room on each side for them. There also needs to be some space on top uh, for some detail that we'll add later. So I'm just going to move all of the windows down a little. Okay, so now I can extrude these in by hitting E and then canceling that with right mouse click and then hitting Alt S to scale them in. And now I'll press P and separate all those windows by selection. So now I can do the same here. Add two windows here on the, the uh, front and the side. And extrude and then Alt S to scale those in. And then P, separate by selection. Uh, the door will do last. Um, for the back, because you won't always see the back in every case, I'm going to do something else. So I'll just select all of these faces here that make up this little part of the uh, the roof. Although I don't really need the, uh, the underside or these faces here. And I can just shift to D to duplicate it. and then rotate it on Z negative 90 degrees and just position it in the center. To get rid of those uh, curved backs you can just select that edge and then that edge and press scale Y zero and that makes it nice and straight. And because this piece isn't attached to the rest of the mesh in the case that you won't even see it you can just you know tab into edit mode and, and delete it if it's not needed in your scene. So then select this bottom edge and press F to add a face. And then I to inset. I can just delete this face because it won't be visible. Now I can just extrude this down to where the base of the house starts like uh, you know like the foundation part of the house and then I can extrude down again to the very bottom now I can delete that face and there's a couple of faces in here as well the uh, faces on the back can be deleted Okay, now I'll separate this and I'll, I'll join it to the, the rest of the walls. And I can add two loop cuts up the middle. And now select these three faces and press I to inset and give them their own windows. Just extrude them in. And there, again, that's just like a really easy way to like, in the case that you won't see that part of the house, you can just select all those pieces in edit mode and just, you know, delete them. Now I'll add three edge loops up the middle, and this will help to create the door and the windows above. I can select these three edges and press W and subdivide, which creates this edge here. And I can position this up and scale the sides so that I get the right size of the door. That looks pretty good. But it's left these end guns here on the side. We can fix that. If you don't already have the, uh, the automatically merge vertices selected, that's okay because you can just select this edge and press G, G to uh, edge slide this to the edge. And do the same thing on the other side and select everything and press W and choose remove doubles. And you can see that removed four vertices. So, And now there, it's all back to quads. So I can select these two faces and inset them. Select individual. And these windows will be, I want to make these windows a little different because they're in the front. So. Um, I'll first adjust the thickness and bring the tops down. Now I can just extrude all of these back and separate them by selection. 
And like I said before, I want to make these a little different, so I'm going to add three edge loops there and three here. And now let's just grab this center vertex and drag it up so that it's pretty much even with the, uh, the other windows on the other side. And then select the ones on each side of that and drag them up so that they make an arch. I can actually curve that out a little more. And then I can just select these windows and in edit mode just drag these edges up. That looks good. It's just a little bit of extra detail in those two windows since they're you know right in the front. Okay, now I need to add this little, uh, you could put whatever you want here. I'm going to add a face to the top and um, you could add a weather vane or something, but I'm just going to do like a simple cross. So I'll inset that face with I and extrude it up and then scale it in, maybe add an edge loop in the middle so that I can just uh, scale the tip. Now I can type Shift S and choose cursor to selected and then type Shift A and add a cube. And I'll just scale this down really small and scale it on X. And then add a loop cut in the middle and then just scale the ends. I'll change my pivot point to individual origins. Now I'll put my cursor in the center and I'll add a torus. And I want to, to change the, uh, the amount for the major and the minor segments so that it's, it's fewer vertices. I can rotate this on X 90 degrees and then scale it in. And then I can press Alt S to, to sort of thin it out. You need to do this in a, you need to change your pivot point back to median point, but, uh, but that looks pretty good. Again, you can put a weather vane or whatever you choose up there, but I'm just going to stick with something a little more simple. Now I can start on the window frames. So I just want to select one front window and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and then press P to separate it by selection. And then in edit mode, I'll select that and press Shift D again and move it out on Y. And I can inset this in and then extrude it back. And then once I have that in position, I can delete that back face. And then take the first one that I duplicated and scale it in on X. And then just select the, the sides and extrude those back. And I can select this middle face and scale it in on X a little so that it looks a little more detailed and not so boxy. And that will unwrap really well this one piece. It'll just, you know, unwrap really flat. Uh, but the rest of it won't. So we'll just have to add seams on all of the corners. Again, because you know we're going to duplicate this many times, so if we if we do this once now, we won't have to uh, do it again later. So select all those corners and press Control E and choose Mark Seam. Now I can select this middle section, and from front orthographic view, press Shift D and rotate on Y ninety degrees, and then just scale this down and scale it on X a little. And then again, I'll just sort of approximate where you know these little sections should be. I'm not going to make them, you know, perfectly even, but that looks pretty close. So you can see that that one piece is 36 vertices. So you know you could make this more complicated of a window, but you know every time you duplicate it, it's going to you know, really affect your vertice count. And now it's just a matter of duplicating these and positioning them in the windows that are relatively the same size. If you need to adjust or scale them a little to, to have them fit, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, if you if you kept all of the uh, windows the same size when you did your, uh, 
insets, then they should be you know pretty pretty close already. In these two attic windows, I'm going to make a little less complicated. So I'll just uh, I'll do it the same way by you know duplicating the window and then pressing P and separating it by selection. And then in edit mode, I'll I'll duplicate that again. Now I can just inset and pull that back and delete the face. And this one I'm just going to scale down on Z. And uh, and this will be all the detail that I have. I'll, I'll extrude the top and the bottom back. And this will just uh, you know appear to be one of those windows that slides up and down. So I can just duplicate that and, and put it in position on the other side as well. Now I want to join the windows together by selecting both and hitting Control J. And then I can just add my seams here as well so that these will unwrap easily. Now for the front two windows, I'm going to, to select the edges around the window itself and press Shift D to duplicate it and P and separate by selection. And now I'll tab into edit mode and press E to extrude and then S to scale it in. And now the, the some normals are weird, so I need to uh, recalculate and flip them. Then extrude the edges back. Then you can select those front faces and pull them back so they don't come right out to the edge. Now select the faces again and press Shift S and choose cursor to selected. And then press Shift A and add a plane. And rotate it on X 90 degrees. And just scale it on X and position it so that it's in the center. And extrude the sides back and scale the front on X so that it's again not so boxy. I'll just scale this down on Z so that it fits nicely in the window. And then pretty much do the same thing as before, just ro shift D and rotate it on Y. And just position a few, like so. Now I'm going to mark some seams on the corner so that it's, it's easy to unwrap. and then select the window frame and duplicate it over. And now select that in object mode and then the rest of the windows and hit Control J to join them. And now I can start working on the door. So I'll tab into edit mode and I'll add two loop cuts and then I'll move them up a little and switch to face select and choose all the faces and press I to inset and then in my inset toolbar options I'll select individual now I can switch my pivot point to um, individual origins and scale them in on X and then maybe switch back to uh, to median point so I can scale them on X and they'll come a little closer towards each other and I can extrude these in and back to individual origins and scale them down and then I to inset and then I can just pull all those faces out a little bit and that creates a little bit of detail on the door now I can add a doorknob so I'll just uh, select this face and press shift D to duplicate it and I'll move it down and scale it. Just extrude it back and then delete that face and just recalculate those normals. Now select that face and press Shift S and choose Cursor to Selected. And then Shift A and add a circle. 
and change the fill type to end gun and take the vertice count down to 8 and now I'm going to rotate it on X 90 degrees and scale it down and just uh, connect all of these vertices by selecting the ones opposite of each other and pressing J, J to join them and then I can just scale it in and select all the vertices around the edge and extrude back and then E to extrude in and then extrude that back again I'll pull this uh, center vertex out so it's a little rounded in the front. It doesn't need a lot of detail because it's so small, of course. Now there's one last thing on the reference image that we're going to use, which is this little object here. So I'll add my cursor and then press Shift A and add a cube and scale it down. I've also added the red dots here to indicate where the vertices are, but we're starting at the, uh, the third one down is where the top of the cube will be. And now I'll move this up and just extrude down so that it meets every red dot. And now I can use the vertex select and press C to, uh, to use my um, selection tool and then just pull all of the vertices back so that they meet the reference image. And this is going to be, uh, you know, the objects that um, sort of support the overhang of the roof. So you could really make this whatever shape you wanted. Um, this is just a very general shape. So I'll scale this in on X, and then I'll grab this top face and extrude up and scale and then extrude up again and now I'll select all these faces and just scale it on X so it's a bit wider then I can delete the back faces and the top face and then select these edges and press S to scale on Y zero and that makes that flat. All right, and so again, because you know there's going to be a lot of these, I'll just uh, add some seams. Press Control E and mark seam. This is going to be a weird uh, object, I think, to unwrap. Uh, that looks okay. Um, I'm probably not going to put too complicated of a, a texture on this, so um, I see that overlapped them, so I'll go back to the way I had it originally. Yeah, you don't you don't want your UVs to uh, overlap each other ever. So okay, so now I'll move this down and scale it in edit mode and just fit it underneath of the uh, where the roof overhangs in the front. I'll give it an array modifier and just like we did with the pillars around the stairs or the uh, porch we're just going to space them out. I'm going to select these front faces because uh, you can see the uh, the geometry. I would, I would rather that be kind of smooth. So I'll smooth just those faces in edit mode. And now the, uh, the sides will stay flat shaded. Okay, and then the same process. Just duplicate these and rotate them around so that they, uh, they fit around the whole house. It's really up to you how many you use. Um, I'm, I'm being a little more generous with how many because I'm, I'm not really shooting for a low poly count, but if you are, then you might want to space them out a little and 
uh, just shoot for a, a lower amount of them altogether. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, the last thing we'll do is we'll add some shutters for the windows. I'll turn my ambient occlusion on in the viewport under shading. Kind of helps it look a little cooler in the uh, in the viewport. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. So yeah, again, we'll we'll start working on the shutters. So in order to do that, I'll just select a uh, a window in edit mode, and I'll shift D to duplicate it. and press P and separate it by the selection. And then just add a loop cut in the middle. And then press V to uh, separate it, which is the you know rip tool, so it, it detaches those vertices. And then I can move each face out to the side of the windows. And then just select both of the faces and extrude them. and then delete the faces in the back, and then recalculate those normals. I'm not going to make a very detailed shutter because I'm going to be just using a texture uh, rather than actually creating each individual little um, you know, fan between the uh, shutters. So, And then just like you know, you've already done before, just keep duplicating them and and positioning them over the windows. And that will finish up the model. Again, if you wanted to add some detail, like some gutters or some chimneys, some other, you know, kinds of maybe like uh, wrought iron, you know, bars around the windows or something, it's totally up to you, but I'm going to call it quits here. And in part two, I'm going to spend a lot of time on texturing, which you guys have asked me to do. But, um, but thank you for watching part one, and I will see you in part two. Take care, guys.